Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Corey is back for The Best, Best of, of Both, Both Worlds. Worlds. First of all, Corey's sitting down because he's, <laughs> he's rather tall, so he didn't shrink. Um, but last time we had so much fun. Um, Corey, you did the arrays and right. showed us a couple of ways to do those, and it was right. really cool. And then we did some freehand feathers. Mm -hmm. So today you're going to show us how to finish this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to do some fills on the inside right here. Um, and then we're just going to do basic repeat patterns on the outside, and then we're going to come back in and finish with some freehand. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm ready for that. So I'll... Um, just walk out of the way and let, let you do your magic here. All right, sounds All good. All right. So today we're going to look at two different features that have been implemented into Creative Studio 6.0, um, fill inside and fill outside. So the first thing that you want to do if you're working with fills is create a boundary. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make my boundary around my Aztec fabric right here. And I'm just going to make multiple points because it's a little curvy. Almost done. Alrighty, and that will complete our boundary. So I've completed my boundary around the Aztec fabric that I have here on the piece. And so I want to use one of the patterns that I've selected, Puddles in the Rain. And I'm just going to click Repeat Patterns at the top. And I'm going to come down to my Repeats and Rows. And I want to do three repeats and three rows. Whenever I've selected those, I can click OK over here at the bottom right. And they'll pop up on the screen. I want to highlight them all. Kind of drag them into the center over it. And I'm going to kind of dense it down just a little bit so we can get more quilting in there. And I'm just using um, my purple anchors right now, just moving certain parts of the quilt. Once I have it spaced the way I want it to, I'm going to come over here to the right-hand side, and there's a sun icon. And if you right-click, you have your um, drop-down box of icons, and those pictures correspond to the ones that are on the right-hand side. So when you get more comfortable working with your machine, you won't even have to right click anymore. You can just click the ones that are on the right hand side over here. So I'm going to click my sun, and if I highlight over it, it says fill inside. I'm going to click that, and Creative Studio is going to work its magic, and it's going to remake a pattern that fits inside with no trims, no jump stitches, fits perfectly in all the way. Woo! <laughs> Once again, I'm amazed. <laughs> and so. Once I've done that fill inside, I want to delete that boundary. And you can kind of see that it's, got, it's a red boundary. And if it's red, that means it's active, which means I can go ahead and delete it. So I'm going to cl click my X over here on the right-hand side, which is Delete Selected. And that red line's gone away. So in the center here, that's where we did our array last time. And I don't want to quilt those swirls over our array. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create another boundary around my circle and fill outside of that so it doesn't quilt in there. So I've selected create a boundary. So I'm going to take my machine, make multiple points around my circle. And then I'm going to select all my patterns by highlighting them once again. 
and choose fill outside, which is the sun, with some clouds right in front of it. And this should take just a second. And there we have it. So it's going to quilt continuously. I can do a virtual stitch out for us so we can see it. So I'm going to go to virtual stitch out. And to do that, I can come right up here. And it's kind of underneath my point to point icon. There's a little blue circle. And if I highlight over that, it's virtual stitch out. Or if I also press F2, it'll start the stitch out as well. And you can use the plus sign to speed it up on your keyboard or the minus sign to speed it up or to slow it down. I'm sorry. So I saw my virtual stitch out. I saw that there was going to be no jump stitches, um, no overstitch, or there's overstitching, but there's not one all the way across. So what, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and have the machine quilted out. I can get my thread. There we go. Bring up my bobbin thread. And there we have it. Cut our threads. And we just set our fill inside and our fill outside. Alrighty, so now we're going to put a pattern in the, these rectangles that we have along our border. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is make a boundary around my first rectangle on this left hand side. Just going to make my clicks around my four sides. Whenever I get to the end, I'm going to hit stop. And then I'm going to come over to my computer. And I'm going to use repeat patterns again because I'm going to size them a little differently. So I'm going to click on that. Click OK to put it on the screen. And that's the pattern that I want to use. Gonna zoom in a little bit more. Just 
use our measurements a little bit more to get it to touch from end to end. Alrighty, and we're ready to quilt it. What was that last little green icon that you clicked on? Um, the last, oh, when I, um, the pattern started down here at the bottom mm -hmm. um, and ended up here at the top and I wanted to flip the start and ends so it would start oh. the quilt down Okay. so I can kind of see where it was going. So it switches it your start and stop. Correct. It's uh, your see. start and ends. So okay. if you click that, it'll flip them to work, uh, work in your favor. Wow. That's a handy little thing to know. Wow, the density of that pattern is really beautiful. Uh, when it, it's on that fabric, that thread, it's just gorgeous. It's just like part of it. Truly beautiful. So now you just do that with the other three sides. Correct, yeah. And then we're ready to do something in the blocks. Right, so we're just going to roll up the quilt real quick so we can throw something in the blocks and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. So now that we've rolled up the quilt, we're going to go ahead and put something in these blocks right here on the sides, or on, on all four corners. So I'm going to start again with making a boundary. So we've made the boundary on there, and you can actually select patterns using the select pattern, which is the uh, top middle button on your keypad. You can scroll through your pattern list on the side and you can select which one you want. So in this case, I'm going to use Corey's Fire. I had a, a pattern designed for me. And I just put the pattern into the boundary. And it hasn't touched my sides all the way completely. So I'm just going to stretch it out just a little bit so we can fill up the block as much as possible. I'm going to have it the way that I like, so I'm going to go ahead and have the machine quilt it. Now, Corey, will that make this a one-way quilt? Yes. You, okay. Yeah. But it's a wall hanging anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So precise, so quick, and so easy. So we just have this one little area here. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do on that? I'm thinking you should freehand on there. I, th <laughs> <laughs> I think we should use a contrasting thread, maybe that, um, that fluorescent yellow again. Oh, that would look good. Yeah. And I'll start it, and then you can finish it. How's that? OK, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> OK. <laughs> one of the things that I found that you can do is like a half of a feather. You okay. don't always have to do the whole feather because okay. that can be exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and just a simple feather sometimes because okay. there's lots of fancy feathers, but we don't have to do those. So I'm just going to start right here and it's just going to be, it's just going to be like that half of a heart shape. See, and then come in there like that. They don't, looks great they don't have to touch all the time. Isn't that green pretty? Yeah. Now we could put stems in them because we can always go back and put the stems in the first ones if we decide to. Right. But I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. No, it looks great. Now I'm going to just go into constant for a minute. Okay. And um, 
Let's see, how do I get out of this? You're going to hold shift. Shift. And press exit. And exit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I'm going to toggle over to, there we go. Mm -hmm. And what speed am I? Uh, you'll get the whenever you click select. There we go. Right at, uh, oh, 100. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of fast. Is there a way to adjust that here? Um, when you're going, you can't adjust it, but after that, you can't do it. Okay, it let's see what 100 is, shall we? Not, why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's not oh, bad. look, it's perfect. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I love the constant. Now, when we go around this corner, see, I'm going to start going over in there like that. Okay. Whoops. When you're doing freehand, you don't really want to hear whoops, do you? <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing is, is that freehand is really freehand. Yeah. You know, and when you're used to um, a lot of precision, mm -hmm. then sometimes you just don't want anything but perfection. Right. And um, it, it doesn't have to be that way, because it's all going to look fantastic. It gives it its own unique look, though. Well, yeah. Because none of us are perfect. And we reach out into that corner. Just kind of go around it like that. And there are always things that you can do to make the fancier feathers right. that cover up mistakes that you might have made. That looks great. See, that's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we could do a, a, well, I can already think of another feather that we could do on top of that one. Okay. It would be pretty cool. Let's see it. Okay. <laughs> I call it the twice over feather. So if I just come right in the middle of that one and then jump down in the middle of this, look at this. Oh, that's beautiful. It brings it to life. Wow. Yeah. So you're making another feather right on top of the other one in the middle of it. Yeah. And it's easy to do because your other feather's already made. Right. So you have something to look at. And oh. now, do you see any mistakes? No, no you, you can't. Can. And people wonder how you did that, because it looks complicated. What could be funner than this? I don't know. <laughs> could be just me, but I really have fun doing this. And you get to do the top part, Corey. Yay! <laughs> I don't know if it's going to look as good as yours. <laughs> It'll look great. I bet it will. Probably better. <laughs> So you just have to reach over for the middle of that last feather. Right. See? Just reach over. And you could come back both times or go up both times. Some right. people like to do feathers going up and others have better luck going down. But you have to learn to do feathers inside, outside, and upside down. <laughs> so you might as well get over which way you like to do them. Exactly. And I really like the constant. But yes. you could do it in regulated. Okay? Okay. Look at that. That's beautiful. I know. <laughs> okay, we're going to roll up and give, give Corey <laughs> a chance. All right, Linda, here I go. Don't be nervous. <laughs> okay, just relax. Here we go. Yay! You've done these before. Oh, maybe once or twice. All we have to do is try to stay in the lines. There you go, and then swing over, yes, and then follow the side. Awesome. Looks just like mine, exactly. <laughs> you won't ever be able to tell whose is what. This is so much fun. And I commend you on your bravery anyway. I mean, that's just, so many people would be so afraid to do that. Yeah. Gotta try it at least once, right? Yep. <laughs> and then after you go around that corner and come down here, you can stop and get your bearings to go back up and jump in the middle of those. 
It's actually easier coming back when you're jumping in the middle of them. Uh, nope. A little leaf. Follow. <laughs> there you go. There, there you go. There we go. <laughs> uh, up right. and down. There we go. There. Up and down. This is a lot of pressure, people. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, that's, so, that's a nice leaf. <laughs> it is good. It's good, and you won't even notice it. So now you want to come down here because you want to follow this line up this and then jump up. Okay. in the middle of there. Okay. There he goes, and where he stops, nobody knows. Uh, you actually follow that line up and jump in the middle. In the middle jump like in that? in the middle. In the middle of the... Middle of the feather that you already have quilted. Okay. There you go. So now... Okay. Jump in the middle. Over and in the middle of that one. Follow that line up and in the middle. It's not that bad once you get the hang of it. Your first knows. art quilt. Is this your first art quilt? Um, it's my second one. Okay. But the first one that I've done all these techniques on. And you see, art can be anything, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Almost there. Good job! <laughs> Touchdown! There we go. There we go. There we go. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We had a blast. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and we um, are really proud of this quilt and hope that you'll join us next time on Best of Both Worlds.